I'm super stoked to be taking a walk in one of the most remote places on the planet Earth. I really am. I'm enchanted by this. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, my host Edward, uh, I met his family and um, they've let me sort of wander off by myself so I can just explore. So I don't quite know what I'm going to see just yet. But it's just, this is a cross, a cross, I've got to stop. This is a crossroads in the jungle, yeah? <laughs> it's a street light in the jungle. This is the island's power station. I'm told this building is full of batteries and uh, I can believe it. I was talking to the uh, principal of the school, uh, didn't film it. Uh, it was a bit rude to sort of get the camera out, but she, she was, it was her 60th birthday today, a bless her. Uh, and uh, she was telling me all about the island. She's from Australia. But obviously, uh, it's the, uh, the school teacher here. And uh, she's telling me that uh, it's a great community. And I can believe that. Everybody is super friendly. At the moment, the islanders are rejoicing because it's been raining so much. At the back of this house, you can see how they collect water. Uh, there's no water on the atoll, so everything has to come from the sky. Off the roof, down a pipe, and into a cistern. This has to be the place where I can get the best Wi-Fi. Looking at that view there through the palm trees, you can just see Shadow sitting outside of the uh, reef line. It's funny to think I've sailed nearly halfway around the world on that little boat now. This is an incredible place. This is Palmerston Atoll, um, somewhere in the middle of the Pacific. It is one of the most remote places on Earth. There are only 40 people live here in a community on this tiny spit of land on this atoll in the middle of nowhere. Um, my boat, Shadow, is just out there on the other side of the reef. Uh, I'm the only boat here. I'm the only tourist on the island. Um, it is surreal, it is beautiful, it is a life experience. I've dreamt of coming here for a long time and here I am and it doesn't disappoint. This is a view I've been looking for. I saw this in a book and now I'm actually here. Captain Cook landed on the island during one of his voyages around the world. But it wasn't until 1863 that the island was actually settled. And this was by a guy called William Masters out of Britain, who eventually had three wives, 23 children and 34 grandchildren. This is the main street. His descendants live on the island to this day. This is really like walking down a street in a Wild West movie. <laughs> it's just like it. Strange. 
There are still a few of the old buildings left on the island. At one time, the population numbered in the hundreds, but now only 32 people live here. This is a photograph of the man that started it all, William Masters. I met one of his descendants. This is the ice cream. Was it Bill, your name? Yes, Bill Clinton. Bill, the ice cream man. He's a famous guy. <laughs> yes. Ice cream in the middle of a... A desert island. Oh, they got Iris's flag up here, look. Yes. <laughs> Johanna and Timo, they left the flag. Yes. I got it, excellent. That's the old church, you can take a photo, take a wow. photo of whatever on the wall, eh? That's the old church, yeah. where the new one is. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. They got everything down here. Yeah, and that's uh, my, I'm a shareholder of Coca-Cola from Canada. Oh, okay. <laughs> and who's that lovely young lady? That's is the that... queen. When oh, she that's was the queen, 19. when she was young. Oh, she was, she was, she was hot then. She was hot. I, yes. I don't think she'd mind me saying that. And that's the second William. Oh, yeah. And that's my grandfather, Ned. And that's my father over there and my grandfather. The same guy. Okay. Well, they said to me, you look like Bin Laden. I said, no, my name is Bill Laden. Bill Laden. <laughs> but I loved, I loved all this, this, this living. The way everybody here just like makes something out of nothing. It's great. Well, because we host the... Uh, cargo boats that come here, we host, uh, say sometimes it's uh, 40, 50 of them. Oh. And we feed the passengers, that's why we need a lot of well, space. Well, that's good, because you're making a living. That's, that's got to be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, bring something to the island. I yeah. like that idea. Here back in 56. He got wrecked, Commander Clark got yeah. wrecked here in 56. Him and Stanley, uh, a guy from the right. Bahamas side. Back in 1954, a Victor Clark on his 33-foot catch Solace, together with a crewman called Stanley Matherin, were shipwrecked on the fringing reef just off the island. It was then that the islanders came to their help. With a lot of effort, they managed to remove the boat from the reef and get her onto land, ready for repair. And those repairs took some considerable time. And it was during that time that Victor Clark and Stanley made a strong connection, a bond if you like, with the people of Palmerston. Eventually, with repairs made, Victor and Stanley left the island. But many, many years later, after a long life, Victor Clark's ashes were brought back to the island by his daughter, and he's buried here in the local graveyard. That's my grandfather and the captain of the Britannia. Ah. He's so excited, eh? He's going to drink gin. <laughs> Man with three wives. Oh, yeah. That's him. He got three white. Oh, yeah, he had. William Masters. Oh, I got a bit of, oh, this is William. Oh, this is William Masters, the Queen of Tonga. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, she's got a couple of points worth looking at. Ice, ice cream no. hoard in here. These are oh, okay. fruit, taro, you know, mango. Right. And this is the crab we collect this morning. Wow. We're going to put it into for the families in Rarotonga. That's all full. This is coconut crab. Wow. Okay. More all stuff's in. More freezers. Yeah. What, what's this? That's KFC. Uh. <laughs> From New Zealand. Wow. Okay, what have we got in this one? They're all parrot ready to be shifted to Rarotonga. Okay, they're what? They're what? Sorry? Parrotfish. Oh, parrotfish. Okay, I thought you got. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you'd frozen some parrots in there. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> that's a you big eat, fish. You eat better than I do. You live on a, a desert island. Oh, that's for me. <laughs> oh, look at that. Thank you so much. We go in the other freezer and you can take yeah. a photo of that and then sit down. And... I will. Hey, any more sponge cake there? It's been not so good the last few days. A lot of swell. I know. My, my anchor's caught the chain, so I'm not sure what's going to happen when the tide turns. Bill is a fascinating guy. He and his family made me so welcome. Not only for the ice cream that he loves to give his visitors, but for information. Bill is the unofficial historian for the island and he knows all the stuff that went on in the past. So many interesting stories. I could have sat there all day listening. So these these guys just started, they were on a sh on what ship? Was it British or something, did you say? Which one? They were the beer bottles. Yes, our warship, Sunderland. Oh, Sunderland. Yeah, he was only three years old. So the Brits came and drank all your beer. Yeah, they drank all my cook's lager and I have to and, buy back Tiger. And, and he, he, he cemented all the bottles yes, I put the, into the, the house. concrete. <laughs> all right around this, uh, okay. this house. This is your dinner house. I just like the story, it's great. I, I love stuff like this. I, I could be at home in here. Well, you have to be a man of all trade. Oh, yes. So you can fix anything. Right? Gold mine, gold mine, I love it.
them. Yeah? Two they're waiting to, they're waiting for tourists. Uh, frigate bird. Oh, you're frigate bird? Yeah. Hello, mate. No, I like boobies. If I'm a man, I would do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Come in, sir. The ladies, they wanted pink tile, so I did the pink tile. That's the pink tile. Oh, yeah. That's our wedding. That's the most important thing, the bar. It's, it's not open yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll, come back, I'll come back when you've opened. <laughs> That's a jailhouse. I built a jailhouse. It's a jailhouse. You look at the uh, yeah. You got bar, you got bars and everything. Yeah. Okay, so you've a bar, you have a bar there, yeah, and you've a bar there. <laughs> Two different bars. A similarity struck me uh, between the island and South America in the way that there is a reverence paid to the dead. Even though it's a small island, there's a rather large or rather disproportionate amount of land given over to the dead in the form of graveyards. I found this rather moving. This is the grave of Bill's father, and next to him, the sailor, Victor Clark, from all those years ago, now buried together on the island. And then the man that started it all, William Masters, who eventually died in 1899. I'd love to have stayed longer, but I was a little bit worried about Shaddy. Although you couldn't see the weather in the middle of the island, I knew that the sea was still quite rough, and I was a little bit concerned, thought I ought to start making my way back. So time for goodbyes. Still had time to walk back to the boat and take in a few more sights. Found this Palmerston Island Administration Building. Nothing more than a shack. I love it. Look at this. Lush, beautiful jungle. Peaceful, not a sound. I was sad. Sad to leave. Earlier on, Edward's family had made me lunch at his house. I made my way back there in order to meet up again to get back to Shaddy. I knew also that I had to make another trip back through the reef to get home. No health and safety here. Note the cigarette in Edward's mouth as he fills up the boat with gasoline. this morning here at Palmerston Atoll 
Uh, and I've got to get the anchor up and the moorings loose because we're on both and get out of here without uh, drifting over there into that uh, mess of nastiness. That is frightening over there. Look at that. Yep. underway under engine and underway just got to get the course before I put the sails up leaving that scary reef behind as a bit of a postscript to my uh, visit to Palmerston Atoll I've got to say out of all the places I've been on these on this trip the, over the last few years this is probably the first place I'm actually upset to leave I really am it's, a, it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful place. And I got the figures wrong. I found the official population figures are something like 40 something. I found out there's only 32 people living on the island. 32 people. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing place. And I just, again, the weather. I would love to have stayed here. I would love to have stayed here for a week, you know? But I'm glad I got the, I mean, there's a squall and storm coming in again now. I'm glad I got the time I did. Uh, yeah, look it up on the internet. Palmerston Atoll. It's a, it's a new uh, territory of New Zealand. So yeah, that's great. Uh, it, uh, I just uh, I'm lost. For, I'm upset to leave. Really, I am. Hope you enjoyed the video of that amazing place, Palmerston. If you don't want to miss any future episodes, then please press the bell-shaped button. That's a notifications button. It's on my front page there if you've already subscribed, or if not, you can subscribe and press it. But anyway, press that notifications button, and then you will be notified every time there's a new old Sea Dogs video. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you soon. see my face at all. <laughs>